Hello everyone and welcome to a new topic in uh, software design and Java programming. Uh, today's topic is uh, uh, arrays. We will look on how to create uh, arrays and the items that we will cover in today's lecture are, as you can see, we will uh, define uh, an array and then we will uh, look at the difference between an array and a variable then we will uh, learn how to uh, initialize an array also we will understand the concept of the subscript or index uh, then we will use a for loop to process an array e either to uh, assign values for each element of the array or to display each element of the array uh, that we will create as we progress. Uh, then we will uh, create a method that takes an argument and the argument is an array. So we did it before, we created our own methods in Java, but we passed one single variable. Uh, today we will uh, pass an entire array, all right? And after we finish doing that, we will look at uh, the software design aspect, we will look at uh, uh, pseudocode of an array, and then the flowchart uh, diagram uh, for an array. Then we will look at uh, common errors, common errors to avoid in the future when you create your own array. Are you ready to get started? Alright, so if you are ready to get started, arrays are that symbol as you can see here in the diagram uh, if you know what is a variable just put put some variables together and that will make an array right so what is an array an array is a group of variables with the same data type so you can think of an array as a container that holds what a fixed number of values so looking at the uh, element down here, the first element of this array, so I have a variable, 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 vari and each variable has its own value. So in order to be able to access the first one, I have to uh, point to the first index. What is the first index of the first part of my array? Is zero. So I use, as you can see here, an integer uh, uh, number to refer to each element of my array so zero refers to which element the first one okay one refers to which one the second one now it's clear you see here so you are always off by one all right always so first one zero second one one third one two fourth one three and so on so keep that in mind as we uh, progress and that will uh, make your life a lot easier in the future when you start programming. So, uh, by looking at this array, do you think I have a length for this array? Yes, I do have a length. As you can see here, the beginning of the array starts from zero and it ends all the way to nine. So, what is the, the length of this array? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten elements, so the length of this array is 10. All right, so now, how can I access each element of my array? To access each element of my array, as you can see here, I use the name of the array, the base name. This is, for example, let's say the name of this array is score. We did not create the array yet, but I'm just giving you an example now. Let's say the name of this array, as you can see it right now, is called scores right so scores and then you open close bracket and put the index number of the element that you would like to you you would like to access so by looking at this element can anyone tell me immediately this element is located where count one two three four five six seven so you look here and you know that you are always off by one from the number that appears in here. Right, so now, uh, what do we get from this slide? This slide is very important. An array 
is basically a container group of variables you keep together with the same data type inside this container so an array starts with an index of 0 all the way the size of the array minus 1 look size of the array is 10 minus 1 gives me 9 so that's the last index one element of my array is basically the base name of the, er, the array I have open close square brackets and put the index number of that element clear I think it will not get easier than what you see right now so can we go on okay good let's go on and continue and look at what do we have you need to understand the difference between an array and a variable so you know that a variable is a single memory location right a variable is a single memory location right I meant to put variable all in lowercase to just give you an, an idea of uh, an array usually is the big picture like the container that you keep value very vari multiple variables inside it so one variable is a single value but an array you have multiple values inside it so one array has multiple variables with the same data type right access how do you access each value of your array by using what the unique index value I showed you the unique index value and I showed you uh, how to refer to each element by using the base name of your array scores open close square brackets and then you plug in the index value that you are trying to access so what is an element an element is basically one variable one element in your array is one variable from the list of variables in an array so what is the index an integer which refers to a specific element in an array are we good keep going okay now Ooh, can you give me an example of an element let's say I have a, a, an array that's called scores and then open close square brackets and then you plug in the index can anyone tell me which element is this element this is the first element of my array so how do you refer to the first element of the array by using the base name of the scores array right referring to the first element by using the value of the first index which is zero keep in mind when I typed scores it's all in lowercase why because you follow the camel case naming convention when you create an array because it is similar to variable in the way you uh, in the uh, actual naming convention but in the way you declare it it's different we'll look at how to create an array in a minute so now when you when you declare an array let's let's look at what we have in here uh, first you specify the data type data type of your array uh, open close square brackets that means that you are uh, creating an array right uh, not uh, if you continue here you will uh, see the array name so that means that the data type of this array is an integer so open close square brackets that means that this is not a variable name this is an array name you did not create the array yet why because what you are doing here is creating a reference to the array right keep in mind I have spaces space after integer space after uh, uh, square brackets and the space before the semicolon that's okay you will not get any errors if you remove the spaces that's okay too so you can have spaces or you can remove the spaces 
from around your keywords. All right, so now we already created a reference to the array, but we did not create the array yet. So here we created the reference to the scores array, but we did not create the array yet. So now, how do you create the array? Or how do you allocate a memory location to your array? By using the reference, the array reference here, and assigning a new, using the new keyword type, the data type of this array is an integer. How many elements do I have in this array? Four. Semicolon. That's how you uh, create your array. We will look at different uh, ways to uh, uh, refer to an array and to uh, create a memory location uh, to your array as well. So now, do I have values? Do I have values for the scores array? Not yet. Why? Because I created memory location, but I did not give each memory location a value or each element of my array a value, right? So now how do you give each element of your array a value? By using the element name, element, the array element name here, scores, you know that now, now you know it, right? Equals and then the value, 100, semicolon. Let's initialize the second one. Base name scores and then the index of the second one is one equals 200 you can give it any number of your choice right based on the exercise or the lab that you are using so now you know how to assign a value to each element now how do you display the element itself i told you that each element is basically a variable so you can use each element as a variable in your system out the print line as you can see here at the last line of this slide by looking here scores and then this will print which element? The first or the second? Yes, you're right. The first. Why? Because I have an index of zero. Keep going. So, uh, talking about arrays, we, st we are still talking about arrays. So now, you know every time when you create an array, you create a reference to the array. Okay, someone will look here. Well, you did not teach us to create the array this way. Look, let's go back. You created your array by having the curly bracket in between integer and scores. Let's go forward. And here you are saying that you can create the reference for the array by having the square brackets after the array name reference or the reference for the array name. Yes, you can, but that's not recommended, really. You don't just stick with this one. Stick with this one. All right, you don't have to use this one, but if you see it, you know that this is another way to create a reference to the array name. All right now, let's create a memory location, memory location for my array, and specify the size. So scores equals new integer, the data type, All right, and then the size. Please keep in mind here you see integer, here you see integer. Right, keep that in mind when you create your array, or you can to avoid any confusion, just do the whole thing on one line. So, integer open close square brackets the array reference name equals new integer of four. So, now I uh, created the reference for the array and specified the memory address for my array, but I did not give values yet. How do you give value? Scores, open, close square bracket. Between the square brackets, you put the index of the element that you are, you are trying to access. And then uh, you give it any value of your choice. Or you can, this is another way of creating an array. You can create and initialize the array at the same time by using the uh, statement that you see in here. Integer, open, close, square brackets, and then the name of your array equals, open, close, curly brackets, and then you have a value for each element, and then semicolon to uh, uh, specify that that's the end of this statement. Okay, keep going. So what are the data types for the arrays that you can use? Very similar, almost the same, like variables, right? 
string double integer boolean uh, char right you can also use different types but these are the ones that we will basically use uh, more often keep going common errors that you uh, might do while you are creating or typing your code uh, some of you when you specify the size of the array you will put it at the beginning here that's not right you put it in the second part of your array creation because you are assigning the size to the reference the name reference so the second line here is the correct form integer open close uh, square brackets score that's the array reference name equals new integer four and then semicolon right sometimes you will need to pass an array uh, to an arg uh, to uh, a method you need to pass it as an argument to a method like for example i have a method that's called find total and then in here i'm saying this is a parameter i'm saying expect the user to pass you an argument which is an array type of an integer and then you put some statements we will look that during the uh, java lab by the way so how do you call how do you call this method by passing the array that you are specifying here that's how you call it you state the method name open close parentheses and then you put the array reference name the array reference name some of you might say okay well i will put a scores uh, open close square bracket please avoid doing that uh, if you would like to pass only one element of the array you can but you will have to put what you will have to put the actual index value in between the open and close square brackets but usually if you are passing an array you pass the entire array by using its reference remember its reference name common errors one more time so the first five lines nothing wrong declaring an array type of integer size of four right size of uh, four so now let's say i have here all right so uh, the first five lines as you can see here uh, you don't have anything wrong you have the array name the array references scores and then uh, you are saying that the size of this array is four the data type is an integer and what is happening here can anyone tell me what is happening in this line you are assigning a value of 100 to the first element of the array a value of 200 to the second element of the array so each one of these here each one is basically a variable that's why you assign a value in the same way you did with a variable right some of you after declaring an array like that the size of this array is 4 and then you try to uh, tell the compiler or tell your um, Java uh, development environment let's say Eclipse inside Eclipse you type scores open square bracket 20 close square bracket 20 this is an index right this is an index so your, your array size is 4 and you are trying to call an index of that is 20 if you do that you are basically making a big mistake why because that's uh, an out of range element or out of bounds remember that remember that all right so uh, how the pseudo code for an array uh, looks like you declare an integer array with four elements as its length all right that's basically the pseudo code english like right initialize a counter to zero you use uh, four 
each index in the array that's if you would like to process the array well, I will cover that in the future but for now you assign a value for each element you increment the counter you print the scores English like pseudocode right mm -hmm. so now uh, how the flowchart looks like for an array uh, some of you might uh, say, okay, well, I instead of uh, adding the number four inside in between the opening closing square brackets, I will declare a constant. So that's a flow chart here uh, showing you how to create and process an array. In this flow chart, instead of using the array length, I am using a constant giving it a value of 4 as the array length and then that's the initializing the counter or the index starting my loop basically for loop you to process your array and uh, here I'm saying if the index is greater than the number of scores exit but if it is not greater keep looping and for each loop increment index and look here you uh, get a value from the user and then assign it to each element based on the index that you are processing. For example, if the first index is 1, that will take you to scores 1. If it is the first, the first index is 2, that will take you to score 2 and so on, right? Uh, keep in mind that in Raptor, uh, the index starts from 1, so that might confuse you, but remember that in Raptor, the index of the array starts from 1, uh, that's why you might get confused, but when you start in Java code, the index always starts from 0. Uh, why? Because Raptor is generic, like it's using a generic environment for any programming uh, language. But for our Java development, remember that you always start from index number 0. So, uh, look in at another flowchart uh, outside of Raptor here. Now, I decided instead of using a constant to start another flowchart here for my design of my array uh, portion of my program. Uh, scores array initialization, you created, you initialize uh, the array. Uh, actually, in this part here, let's say you don't give a value for each element of the array. So, uh, basically, you are creating just the, re the name reference and assigning memory location. Uh, can anyone uh, give me the statement to do that? First, the data type, right? I, N, T, integer. And then open, close, square brackets. And then the name of your array, let's call it, it's called scores. Uh, equals what? new if you remember new right new and then space and then you uh, specify the data type data type what is the data, data type integer i n t and then open close uh, square brackets you put number four in between and then semicolon and that's basically uh, what i mean by having this section here all right uh, now uh, you start a for loop to start processing your array so in your for loop, you need to uh, create, okay, can anyone look here and find the mistake? This is var, and we are in Java, right? So how do I change that? Anyone? So if I go back here, I can change this to data type, which is uh, integer so having these things while we are uh, talking that will make you separate JavaScript from Java all right first you start your uh, counter or you initialize I to zero and then you have a condition you have a test if i is less than the length of the array scores if that's true if that's true increment the i do some action maybe uh, assign a value for each element and then loop again all right so someone might look at this code 
and tell me instead of having initialize statement in here you should have it outside of your for loop so you don't initialize i each time so some of you might do that right might take this one from here and then put it outside of the loop all right so now let's save one more time and go back to our presentation does that look better so now what is happening i am creating the name reference for the array i'm creating the name reference for the array all right and then i am declaring a variable initializing its value to zero right uh, by the way if you create an array and you don't give each element of the array a very a value in this uh, section here the each element will have a default value of zero if the data type of this array is uh, integer keep just just keep that in mind and i will show you some examples when we start our uh, lab and then you go inside your for loop you have a test condition inside your test condition you are saying as long or if a i is less than scores dot length thus the length of the array if that's true increment i and then it's very important that you increment i and then your action for example is to give a value for each element and keep watch here the index is basically looking for the value of i so the value of i will be what will be let's let's start so now uh, integer i equals zero so now the variable of i is zero i am starting here to look at this condition if this condition is true now you do what you increment i so basically someone might say okay well instead of having i here i would rather to have i here right so now let's go ahead and save and look at our flow chart one more time does that look easy to understand now so again you start your application you uh, create your uh, array name reference and you initialize it default initialization if it is an if you have an array of integer data type of integer that will give each element a value of zero and then for your for loop you need to create a, a counter i and then initialize its va its value to what to zero you go through your for loop and inside your for loop you have a test as long as i less than or if i is less than the scores dot length if that's true now you will do some action and you increment your uh, uh, i and then i value now is uh, one and then you go through your loop again and look at the condition uh, one and then less than uh, four and then you keep going two three and one once it comes to four for example here that will be uh, false because uh, four is not less than uh, four and that will make your loop end and that's basically how you process your array right so how a for loop loop looks like uh, for you have your initialization you have your test and then you increment or uh, decrement you increment or uh, decrement all right so now going back here someone might do that someone might come here i need you to find out uh, the difference between i plus plus please make sure that you test that in eclipse look at here look at uh, i plus plus let's change that to uh, plus 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 i and then look at our flow chart one more time plus plus i or i plus plus please uh, after we finish this lecture i need you to create your for loop 
and in your for loop look at the structure of your for loop I need you to try i plus plus and plus plus i and see how this will affect your for loop you need to understand how the loop is working so if you know how each step in your loop is being executed you will be able to handle each statement correctly without any uh, mistake all right so now going back here uh, processing arrays so in your java code that's how you create an array reference for uh, the uh, scores array and then specifying the size of the array but you did not give it a value yet you did not give each element a value so how do you give each element a value for example of 200 you start a for loop you initialize i to 0 semicolon you have your test as long as i less than scores dot length semicolon increment i and then open close curly brackets scores i equals 200 so that means that it will keep looping for 0 and then it will increment 1 increment 2 increment 3 increment test 4 is not less than score dot length exit clear okay so if this is not clear I know array can be confusing at the very beginning when you are learning it for the first time let's get out of programming completely let's say now you are uh, going to Walmart to buy some macaroni for example a macaroni box one macaroni box and you don't know where is the aisle where is the aisle for the uh, macaroni product so what do you do do you just keep walking or do you ask someone let's say you are smart and then you decided to ask someone to save you time so the cashier for example or the customer service told you that you need to look for the aisle tag which is a small sign that is above the macaroni aisle basically they give uh, the aisle uh, label a number but in our example here I would like to give you an actual name so you understand what's going on so now uh, looking at macaroni tag that is posted on top of the aisle can if you go get this tag and hold it by your name will you be able to get the macaroni box by doing that no 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 you won't why because the macaroni box tag on top of the macaroni aisle is just what is a reference for the customer when the customer comes in the customer will look at the aisles labels and then he or she will see that the macaroni aisle is located somewhere someone will go and then try to take this uh, logo or this uh, uh, sign and then put it in a bag do you think that you are smart by doing that do you think that you are taking the box by doing that no because if you do that you are taking the reference look what you can do when you create an array so when you first declare an array you create an array reference how by typing int open close square brackets and then the array name all right so that is basically like the aisle sign for macaroni so now let's say in the uh, next scenario you were able to reach the aisle based on the sign that is on top of that aisle so now when you do that in java when you uh, uh, specify the size of your array basically if you type this code integer uh, open close uh, square brackets scores equals new and then the data type and then the size now you reach the actual macaroni shelf can you reach any box once you are in the shelf the shelf is empty 
This, the shelf is empty. You have nothing on the shelf. If you uh, try to reach a box, will you be able to reach any box? No. Why? Because you will get no boxes. Because there are no boxes. So, uh, let's say now you are trying to... Uh, you are in the macaroni aisle. And then you decided to take the reference which is scores by itself and try to display it that's what you get do you see this this address here this is a memory address so you get no nothing no values because that's just a location this is just the shelf this is just the shelf there are no macaroni boxes all right if you try to put your hand in the specific location of each box that's what you get. It will tell you, I have a zero. I have no boxes. So now, how do you give a value? How do you create a box for each location inside your macaroni shelf? Not in, in uh, let's put it in a, in a programming aspect, inside an array. L let's say how to assign a value for each element of the array. Do you see? Score i equals box value. Once you do that inside a for loop, this is what you get. Now, if you use scores and then put the index number of each element, that will give you the value of the element. I hope now arrays topic is clear. Thank you everyone for watching and I will see you in the future. Bye-bye.